It's September 23rd, 2015. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. Tonight. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Come on, is this guy for real? Or is he an agent provocateur? The unknown man who recently questioned Donald Trump about Muslims and Barack Obama has been mysteriously featured on left-wing blogs and anti-Tea Party websites for years. Then, why are police in Germany turning a blind eye to rape victims in refugee camps? Plus, U.S. trained Syrian rebels surrender their stockpile of weapons to Muslim extremists on the Turkish border. And a message from the pot-bellied pedophile network. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep restful sleep, knockouts it, InfoWarsLife.com. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced and it just synergistically puts everything in there. Visit InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Top story tonight, German police covering up rape so as not to legitimize critics of mass migration. This is a story up on InfoWars.com. Police in Germany are keeping quiet about a spate of rapes targeting children committed by Muslim migrants in and around refugee camps so as not to, quote, legitimize critics of mass migration. And that's according to local media reports. The Gatestone Institute, and you can click through on the article to see this full list, has compiled a list of the innumerable rapes committed by predominantly Muslim asylum seekers over the last few months. And if you go into the article, literally about two dozen of these instances just over the last few months and one of those cases involved a 13-year-old girl who was raped at a migrant camp in Detmold, a city in west-central Germany. The girl and her mother originally fled the Middle East to escape from sexual abuse in their home, only to be targeted by an asylum seeker from the same country. So police, fearing that knowledge of the rape, if this went public, could lead to, quote, right-wing demonstrations buried the incident. They prevented it from going public for three months. And again, this is just one of dozens of examples. We have a 14-year-old boy who was raped on a train recently. There was a 16-year-old girl who was walking home from a train station situated near a migrant camp. And police in the German Bavarian town of Mering have also warned parents not to allow their children to go outside unaccompanied. Just as we covered in another town in Germany, the school that told girls not to wear shorts so as to avoid offending migrants and provoking attacks. So we've got a massive cover-up going on of these rape cases. At first, it seemed like a trickle, but then we realized that the police were not even reporting divulging information about any of these cases until months after the event. And now we know that's because they fear public backlash, public demonstrations, if we find out about these rapes that are happening, not only in the migrant camps, so the victims aren't just Muslim migrants, Muslim children, they're also Germans who live nearby. So this is impacting every, everyone in the area. And we're seeing in Germany what happened in the UK. For over 15 years in the town of Rotherham, we had girls trafficked for sexual abuse by these Muslim rape gangs. But the police, the councillors, and the social workers in that area refused to arrest the perpetrators 
because they were afraid of being called politically incorrect. So Germany is basically, over the next five, ten years, if this migrant invasion continues, they're talking about 800,000 before the end of the year, millions after that, they're going to experience what Sweden has experienced. Again, Sweden opened its doors to mass migration back in the 70s. Since that time, a 1,400% increase in rapes. And the people who complain about that in Sweden are being charged with hate crimes simply for talking about it. So you're going to be charged with hate crimes for speaking out against women being raped, and the left and the feminists will sit there and applaud it. Because that's tolerance in action, tolerance for rape gangs to abduct and molest children. This is a situation that's increasingly becoming a problem in Germany. ZDF, the top German broadcaster, is also censoring information about this. Uh, a Muslim suspect who rapes a young girl a couple of weeks ago, they refused to air any details about that case, again, because the editor-in-chief said, this may offend Muslims, this may cause tensions in the community. So again, we're being asked to uh, modify our behavior. Schools are warning girls not to wear shorts so as not to offend and provoke attacks by these migrants. And you'll be labeled a racist simply for drawing attention to it. Just like Donald Trump was savage for saying illegal immigrants commit crimes, which leads us to our next story. This is out of Northwest Florida Daily News today. Two men accused of trying to kidnap kids from Crab Island. Two men who told their victims they were from the Dominican Republic were charged with false imprisonment Sunday for allegedly trying to take three children away from their mothers at Crab Island, and this is in Florida. Gonzalez Boba Villa took an 11-year-old Santa Rosa Beach girl and placed her on his kayak. The child, who is autistic, according to her father, didn't understand what was happening. Then the second suspect tried to physically grab a three-year-old boy from this mother's arms and again put him on this kayak. When the boy's mother tried to get her child back, the man pushed her away. So basically, the mother's out there screaming for help. Thankfully, that causes these two men who claim they were from the Dominican Republic to flee from the scene and abandon the children so they were safe with the mother. They said, quote, we're from the Dominican Republic and we just want to have fun. And again, you know, according to Salon.com, the woman shouldn't have been so upset at having her kids grabbed and maybe she's a racist for not letting them have their fun because we now need to be supportive and understanding of pedophiles, as I explain in the following video. Left-wing outlet Salon.com just published an article by a self-confessed pedophile in which the author Todd Nickerson calls for readers to be understanding and supportive of people who are sexually attracted to children. Nickerson is a moderator over at the Virtuous Pedophiles Forum, where he talks about drooling over pictures of underage girls. Other posters talk about whether a six-month-old baby can consent to sex. Nickerson describes his lusting after kids as merely a different form of, quote, sexual orientation while trying to portray himself as a victim of circumstance. So if we're to accept paedophilia as a, quote, sexual orientation, what else could be considered under that umbrella? Or necrophiliacs, people who like to have sex with dead bodies merely expressing their sexual orientation. Or people who like to bash women in the head with hammers while raping their half-unconscious bodies, just expressing their sexual orientation. What about bestiality? The people who copulate with their dogs, just another oppressed minority. People who embrace apotemnophilia, deriving erotic pleasure from the removal of their limbs. Is that a mental illness or a sexual orientation? Just because it turns you on, that doesn't make it a sexual orientation. None of those things should be treated as a legitimate sexual preference. They're indefensible and morally abhorrent. But this isn't the first time that Salon has acted as an apologist for paedophiles. In 2012, they published an article entitled 
Meet pedophiles who mean well. So leftists are constantly calling for anti-feminists, men's rights activists, global warming skeptics and others to be quote, no platformed while giving platforms to actual pedophiles. As Steven Crowder writes, you'll never see Salon publish an article entitled, I'm a racist, not a monster. Or one with the headline, I'm a college freshman with rape fantasies, but I'm not a monster. So why this bizarre obsession with mainstreaming pedophilia? The fact is that some on the left have acted as pedophile apologists for decades attempting to rebrand their sickness as something on a par with homosexuality. It's this insistence that just because someone was born that way, the rest of society must be browbeaten, not just into tolerance, but into outright endorsement. Leftist beat poet Allen Ginsberg was a supporter and member of NAMBLA, the North American Man-Boy Love Association. In the UK, the Pedophile Information Exchange was affiliated with the leftist National Council for Civil Liberties, which had direct ties with the Labour Party. The notoriously left-wing BBC played an integral role in covering up the Jimmy Savile paedophile scandal for decades. Just last week, when transgender Gamergate critic Sarah Nyberg confessed to being a paedophile, progressives leapt to her defence, characterising her as a victim. We also saw a similar response from the left, in the case of Lena Dunham. So while paedophiles are certainly not all left-wingers, the defense of paedophilia does seem to be a preoccupation with some on the left. And that's because left-wing identity politics is underpinned by moral relativism. That's why feminists can ignore Muslim rape gangs while fabricating myths about a college rape crisis that doesn't exist. That's why gay rights campaigners wring their hands over a Russian propaganda law while refusing to address the torrid persecution of homosexuals in many Islamic countries. For the most part, progressives are morally bankrupt. That's why they resort to virtue signaling and slacktivism to disguise their tormented nihilism. If paedophiles truly want to give something back to society, it shouldn't be in the form of whiny opinion pieces published by major news outlets in the hope that we can support and understand them better. It should be in the form of a bullet to the head. That's the only action a paedophile can take that I will understand and support. Paedophiles, please stop wasting time trying to convince us all that you're a misunderstood minority. And please get busy killing yourselves. Now, of course, there was a major controversy last week when a man stood up in the audience during a Donald Trump event and asked the Republican candidate about Obama and Muslims. Let's take a look. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. This is man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Now, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're gonna be looking at that and plenty of other things. So of course, that incident last week during Trump's event set off a media narrative trying to portray Trump and also Ben Carson as anti-Muslim. Of course, you remember they asked Carson what he thought about a Muslim being in the White House. But just like Ahmed Mohammed and his clock, which was also an example of you know, Obama hijacking this anti-Muslim sentiment uh, to politically grandstand as being politically correct. This turns out that it could have been a setup from the very beginning, because a man who looks lo exactly like the notorious Muslim question guy that we just saw in the clip there from the Donald Trump event was previously the star of a liberal anti-Tea Party campaign. Breitbart News has learned, and this is also being picked up by Gateway Pundit, the man whom some suspect to have been a liberal or a democratic plan in Trump's audience was featured in a meme in the spring of 2013 that was credited to AATP.org, the website of the group Americans Against the Tea Party. The man was depicted part